Are you bullish or bearish on this cryptocurrency market? As well as you might be surprised who is expecting an alt season and when? That one definitely surprised me and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. And who is ready and waiting to clean up the mess from the SEC? We're gonna cover all of those in today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Heidi, this is Crypto Tips. If you haven't done so yet, please hit like and subscribe. I don't think you'll regret it. So uh, CoinGecko, a really popular website for learning about a lot of different information about cryptocurrencies. I highly recommend it. It's a free website, very helpful. They conducted a survey of like, I think 2,500 people who were either investors or builders in the cryptocurrency space, as well as traders. But who is more bullish, an investor and builder versus traders? Well, I've got the report here right for you. I'm gonna read it off. It says, among the four types of survey participants, investors, traders, builders, and spectators, the latter were the most bearish in crypto with two in five reporting some level of pessimism. So the people who are constantly trying to pick up pennies in front of the steamroller and spectators, those who don't have any exposure to crypto at all, those are the ones that are the most bearish compared to those investors who are more long-term mindset and builders who are actually putting their time and effort into building more for us in this cryptocurrency space. They are bullish. So let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Are you bullish or bearish? All right, now let's move on to alt season. When is it gonna happen and who is making a surprising uh, prediction for this? JP Morgan? <laughs> okay, on July 9th, there was a report from a crypto analyst from JP Morgan saying that they thought Bitcoin had already topped out. Now, there is an article, and we already know what that means. That means that JP Morgan wants you to be scared, wants you to sell to drive the price lower so that they can buy more at a cheaper price. Happens every time, textbook move from JP Morgan. Now they are saying that alt season is gonna happen in August. Why is this gonna happen? Well, they don't deny that alt season always happens after Bitcoin sees a healthy rise in price. And once people take profits from Bitcoin, they filter that onto the altcoins. Also, textbook move in the market of cryptocurrencies. But this is quite uh, contradictory because they're saying that the all-time high of Bitcoin had already happened months ago at this point, many months ago. And now this is such a delayed reaction for alt season. Very interesting. And read between the lines because with JP Morgan, you better believe they aren't going to be honest with you at any rate if they can avoid it. So will alt season happen in August? That means that they think Bitcoin is going to pump before August. And if you're wondering, okay, well, Bitcoin isn't really doing anything or it just did a move, let's say, and it's moved another, say, $10,000 in price increase within a week, $15,000, $20,000 within two weeks. How do you know when alt season starts? How can you measure that? Well, not only will we need to see the altcoins in general, especially within the top 50, excluding stable coins, rise with Bitcoin, but they will need to, but 75% of those in the top 50 that aren't stable coins will need to outperform Bitcoin. And that's when you know that you are in alt season. So for those of you in the CT club, that's when you can begin to expect us to start announcing that we are taking profits, which coins and how much and all that stuff will be in the details of our trade alerts. For those of you who are interested and haven't done so yet, I highly recommend you check out learningcrypto.com where you can learn exactly which coins we're holding and when we are buying and selling those coins. So JP Morgan seems super bullish on altcoins now. And why would that be? I mean, are they regulated even? Are they securities? Are they commodities? We've seen the SEC completely fail at being a regulator. Not that regulators are needed in the cryptocurrency space. Blockchain technology literally renders them irrelevant. Publicly auditable information happening in a decentralized network does not need a regulator. Regulators are needed for centralized platforms that must bend the knee to governments and must forfeit a lot of privacy, dare I say, all of their users' financial privacy uh, to report to these regulators so that they can be compliant. And now the SEC has failed time and time again to 
create any clear rulemaking for those who want to operate in a centralized manner in the United States because there is no federal law clearly dictating what a cryptocurrency is, how it can be categorized and thus regulated. So with the SEC failing like they have been, now the CFTC is saying, hey guys, I'm a regulator too. And we think actually that 70 to 80% of all cryptocurrencies are not securities, they are commodities. That is an interesting percentage. Makes me think they made it up, right? Uh, 70 to 80 percent are commodities. What makes the 30 to 20 percent? What makes the 20 to 30 percent of other cryptos not that? Aren't most cryptocurrencies very similarly uh, created? But don't worry. No one is smart enough or plugged in enough in the Senate or the Congress to actually ask those types of questions to uh, <laughs> get that kind of clarity. But for those of you who are feeling a sense of relief that maybe, man, the SEC was so bad, I prefer crypto to be led to be registered as a commodity instead of a security because the SEC sucks. Well, you guys must be new or haven't been paying attention to some of the opinions expressed by the chair of the CFTC and saying how, how bad the SEC has been lax in regulating cryptocurrencies and they will be so much better at it, AKA strict about it. They're talking about using AI models to uh, filter through and verify KYC AML information. And that means for those of you who only know how to use centralized platforms, you're gonna be sacrificing so much of your financial privacy, even more than is required of you right now to participate in crypto. If you only know how to use centralized platforms, the regulated, the approved platforms, that approval means that you have to sacrifice a lot of information that will become at risk to hacks and scams. Revealing this type of information makes you vulnerable. Regulators do not care. They wanna know all your information. They want to collect it, they wanna sell it, and they want to benefit from it as best they can. And you are the one that hurts for it. There are plenty of tutorials that now exist on YouTube if you just want to get an overview of what to expect to use a decentralized exchange. If you're still not finding those to be helpful or very uh, what you're looking for, I am planning to create a, probably a video series at this point of at least video, three videos uh, talking about what you can expect using a DEX, what are the best ones to use, and best practices for security and all that fun stuff. So if you haven't done so yet, hit like and subscribe. Your crypto journey, I think, will benefit greatly from your exposure to crypto tips. We have nearly a decade of experience in this space. Toby has more than me, for sure. Uh, and we love to share that ex uh, experience and our passion with you through this educational platform. If you want to know even more, go to learningcrypto.com. You won't regret it. Thank you for tuning in. See you tomorrow.